two of the most powerful projects in crypto are now combining forces. This could be the biggest partnership we have seen in some time, but there's something getting lost in this partnership that is actually a huge FUD buster. One of the biggest FUD stories of the year got dealt a massive blow. Find out which two projects it is in the shocking FUD reversal. Let's get it. Welcome to BitBoy Crypto News Edition. Once per day, I'm going to break down the biggest news stories in the crypto space for you. So if you want to know where Bitcoin and altcoins are going, then you want to make sure to subscribe to the channel and join both my Telegram groups, the BitSquad for regular crypto chat and BitSquad traders to discuss trading strategies. All right, guys, I'm bringing you guys another news edition of the show. Today, we're going to be looking at the markets and once again, examining Bitcoin's recent pump and where it could be heading soon. It wouldn't shock me if we were back over 9K tomorrow. Bitcoin right now feels like it is about to blow its top off. But in even bigger news, we're going to take a look at two projects combining forces and why there's some even deeper news buried in the announcement article. We have some other altcoin news as well involving XRP and whether or not a certain huge corporation is coming after them. And lastly, we're going to touch on one of the most underreported stories of the year. All right, guys, so obviously we've had a red day over the last 24 hours. Not a huge deal. I mean, we had at one point, I think, a 14% pump. So we dropped about 6% on Bitcoin today. I do expect it to go back up in the near future. We're going to look at the chart in just a second. But really looking across the crypto scene, I mean, pretty standard drops uh, from what we've seen. I think tomorrow we're going to talk a little bit more about what could possibly happen with altcoins. So make sure to stay tuned for that. So yesterday I had some questions about my setup here. So I'm using tradingview.com and then I pull up the BTC USD perpetual futures contract from Bybit. I do most of my leverage trading on Bybit. I do use Femex and also OKX a little bit, but this is primarily where I'm trading. So I do want to let you guys know about that. And then these lines here, uh, anything you see that's not a candle is part of the FOMO trender indicator, which you guys can get uh, in the description down below. So just kind of looking at the charts, what I'm doing, I didn't make a single trade today. Uh, and the reason is, is because as you can see on the uh, FOMO indicator, uh, it will tell you when to buy, as you can see right here. But then also it tells you when to sell. However, when we zoom out and we look at, let's say, the uh, the four hour chart in the four hour chart, we are still actually in an uptrend. Even though we have bounced down a little bit, we are still in an uptrend. And same thing when you go and you look at the daily chart. So when you zoom out and you look at kind of the larger time frames, it's pretty obvious that we are still in an uptrend. So I pretty much trade exclusively off the one hour chart. And that's why I didn't really make any moves today. So even though the indicator did give me a sell sign, I looked at the larger time frames. I said, I'm going to sit out today. So what I'm really waiting for is I'm waiting for this red line here, the sell line to turn to green. And that's when I will try to make some moves. You don't really want to go against the overall trend of the market. So some people get caught up over trading where they want to hit every long and every short. But sometimes it's just better to sit out and wait until your move lines up with the overall trend. So right now I'm looking for longs. I'm not really looking to short at any point right now, especially leading up to the happening. So we got a couple trading stories for you guys. A uh, very interesting BitMEX used to be the king of all trading, and now it's actually lost 50% of its market share. And you can see the companies that have really benefited from that. You can see Bybit has really taken a big hold on the market with 8.5%. And you see OKX. I didn't know OKX is actually the biggest uh, futures platform right now, which was very interesting. You see back taking up a tiny spot there. Speaking of Bybit, they actually sent me a Bybit branded ledger. I don't even know if you can tell. So a big thank you to them for that. And that's right. You'll never be able to liquidate my ledger, Bybit. I want to share this with you guys real quick as well. This was on Reddit today. Uh, this guy, Joe007, he's a big trader. Uh, he lost 80% of last month's profits trying to short the bottom and you see this number and you're like man he lost 18 million dollars he must be like you know ready to off himself or something uh, we've actually seen that in the past with people making big losses uh, but this is unrealized at this point so he still has a short open i believe uh, but what you got to realize about these whales is that uh, a short would just be a hedge against his massive holdings which means for every dollar of loss you see in the picture he actually made money 
from his holdings. You're always going to make more money if you long the market than if you short it, because when you short it, uh, your money is worth less. Now, if you're a whale and you're holding these huge stacks of Bitcoin, then in that case, you're actually shorting as a hedge to protect your holdings. You're not doing it because you were like hoping the price of Bitcoin is going to drop. All right, so CNBC talking about Bitcoin again. Cryptocurrency market value jumps 35 billion in 24 hours, led by a surge in Bitcoin. But you know what they're speculating here is that the reason for this pump is because of stimulus money. Now I'm wondering how many of you guys actually put your stimulus money into Bitcoin. If you did that, drop me a comment down below. Would love to hear those stories. Uh, but right here says major central banks around the world have unveiled huge stimulus packages to cushion the economic fallout from the uh, pandemic. They have also signaled their willingness to do more. This has been a factor behind the recent rise in stock markets in past few days and has filtered through to Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. In addition to that, part of the reason why the stock market has been rising is because they've had some favorable tests of some cures and treatments of, you know, probably the world's most overblown uh, sickness in history. It's shaping out to look like at this point, at least. Um, so uh, on the heels of that, we also have the Federal Reserve Chair saying, we won't run out of money and basically this is you know what people are saying is so bullish about bitcoin right now is this demonstrating the use case as our country is just in countries around the world are just printing money at will uh, so jerome powell the chairman of the federal reserve said and the second thing is we won't run out of money you know it's not a limited pot i don't think that's how money works i don't think that's you know the way the money works uh, basically what he's saying is that uh, you know we should put all of the debt concerns aside because right now the United States is racking up a huge amount of debt and Jerome Powell is saying none of that stuff matters. We can just print ourselves out of debt and I don't think that's a very good place to be obviously for the long term of the US dollar. Okay, so we have the two hottest coins of the last year linking up. No pun intended. I'm just kidding. I did mean that pun. I think it makes me sound smart if I'm in it. But Tezos chooses Chainlink Oracles to power its smart contracts. Uh, the top 10 ranking blockchain now has the ingredients it needs to develop a stable coin. Now, basically what this is, is Chainlink is going to be powering the smart contracts of Tezos. Now, where this gets really interesting is, and what I was talking about in the beginning of the video about FUD busting is, it says Tezos will use the oracles to develop its next generation uh, decentralized applications, including stable coins. Wait a second. Why do people care about stable coins right now? I thought those were going to be totally banned and just destroyed and removed from the world. Well, the joke's on you. We have projects making big moves based upon the fact they are still planning to push forward with stable coins. Anyone that's telling you stable coins are going to be extinct don't understand cryptocurrency. Uh, so it says stable coins are essential to get an on chain economy going on Tezos. Uh, with secure and reliable Chainlink oracles becoming available on the Tezos chain, we will finally see multiple stablecoin projects launch on the platform and really unlock its potential. Uh, so we know that we're having some stablecoins coming on Binance. We know that Atom is working on, or uh, Cosmos is working on uh, some stablecoins. And now we have Tezos laying the groundwork for their own stablecoins. Decentralized Finance is going to be much bigger than just Ethereum. It's going to continue to expand. And I think that's good news. And I think it's better news that these projects are moving forward. Stablecoins are not going extinct, guys. So don't believe that narrative. I know everybody was talking about it a couple weeks ago. Yes, there are some regulations probably coming, but without these stable coins, the cryptocurrency uh, you know, environment doesn't really work. We need those and they will continue to go forward. So pretty interesting if you are an XRP fan. We have YouTube suspending Ripple's tech chief days after XRP scam lawsuit filing. So last week, specifically on my podcast, Beards and Bitcoins, we talked about uh, YouTube getting sued by XRP because Ripple, the company, obviously, well, sued by Ripple, because the company is trying to get rid of all the scam giveaways using their name on YouTube. Well, lo and behold, immediately after that lawsuit, within the next week, we now have David Schwartz, the CTO for Ripple, getting his account suspended on YouTube. Now, is this a coincidence or is YouTube possibly setting up to cause havoc on uh, you know, anything that has to do with Ripple because they're fighting against them. Now, if there's one company that could crush Ripple, it would definitely be uh, YouTube as, you know, Google is, I think, the second second or third biggest company in the world, I believe second. Uh, so very interesting. And as of last uh, check, 
it does not look like his channel is back up yet. So is this a byproduct of the lawsuit? Uh, last story I wanted to look at today is Telegram now delays the launch of its blockchain by one more year, ready to return investor money. If you didn't know, Telegram was trying to launch something that would really be similar to LibraCoin in a lot of ways, and it has been pretty much shut down with the government. They're actually offering refunds, and I believe this is one of the most underreported stories of the year. While Libra got all the attention, meanwhile, the government was really messing with Telegram, uh, and they've not been able to uh, launch their blockchain. So they have two options for investors. You can either get 72% of your money back, Sounds kind of like a scam. Uh, or the company is also offering a new alternative. You get 110%. You make a 10% return uh, if you just wait one year uh, via a loan option. So this is a story I really want to get more into. I don't think people have actually talked about this enough. So probably in the next week, we'll be really kind of covering this, uh, you know, at least a little more in depth. That's all the news we got for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to smash the like button and hit subscribe to become a member of the Bit Squad. Thank you so much for watching. Have a blessed day. Bit Boy out.